uh, welcome everyone to um, our conversations about film as part of uh, the Greek Film Expo. This is um, the last of, of uh, speaking series that we had throughout the week and weekend. It's the second to the last day of the film festival. Hope you've had a chance to see the movies. And if not, you still have two more days to go online and, and see some of these movies. And today, um, I'd like to first thank the uh, United, you know, Hellenic Film Society USA. I'm on the board uh, and I want to thank my fellow board members who helped organize the festival and these screenings and conversations, uh, especially our marketing communications department, because this has been a lot of people behind the scenes doing uh, all the work, really. Uh, we have a list of active volunteers and, of course, our sponsors. And I want to thank, obviously, our president and uh, festival director, James Demetro, who at the end of uh, these series of talks, we'll, we'll offer some closing remarks. For me, I feel a bit spoiled because I get to today have sort of back-to-back -back conversations with uh, three incredible filmmakers and one leading actress uh, who's joining us today, Daphne Alexander, uh, to discuss uh, Stavros' film, Siege of the Pretty Street. Uh, afterwards, we're gonna move into another conversation to discuss not to be unpleasant, but we have we have to have a serious talk, and uh, the last one will be Sizzle Tech. So uh, let's uh, let's get started. Let me just give a quick introduction to the two um, guest speakers today. So Stavros uh, Pambalis is um, a Greek Cypriot filmmaker. He um, this is his second movie. I think it's his directorial debut. I know he was the writer of a film called Shirley Adams, which he made. Uh, we'll get him to talk about that film. Uh, one. Uh, several Golden uh, Golden Horn Awards, which are awards awarded by the South, Afri South African Film and Television Awards. Uh, and I think that was in 2010. And as I mentioned, he's the writer director of The Siege, uh, which prepared in Thessaloniki and won five awards uh, there in 2019. Daphne Alexander is a actress. She was born in Cyprus and now resides in London and and Los Angeles. She speaks many languages. I, I think her native languages are English and Greek. Uh, and I, I know it's conversational um, and, and fluent in French, and which explains that uh, a lot of her films are either in the Greek, English, or French. And she's worked in theater, radio, television, and film. And so we're so happy to have the both of you uh, today to discuss um, the siege. Uh, so I'll, we'll start off and just I'll want each of you to sort of tell me something about yourself and being a Greek Cypriots, I will have, I will want to know where in Cyprus you're from and whether you are displaced uh, Greek Cypriot or you now think of yourself obviously or you're outside of Cyprus, living outside of Cyprus as the case of Daphne. So uh, but Daphne, why don't you go first and just tell us something about yourself. Of course. Uh, first of all, thank you so much to the festival for and to the sponsors and to James Dimitri for including our film uh, amongst all the wonderful films. We're very, very grateful. Um, and uh, yes, I am a Greek Cypriot. I, I was born and grew up here. Um, we both, in fact, uh, grew up in Nicosia uh, and we knew each other when we were teenagers. Um, and uh, then I went to drama school in London and uh, stayed. I, I, got, um, I got lucky early and I stayed in London to, uh, to uh, pursue my career. I started off doing television and um, things went on from there. Um, but I came back uh, to Cyprus. I, I come back a lot because my whole family live here. I'm the only one in my family who lives abroad. Um, and uh, work-wise, I've come back uh, only a few times. And I have to say that um, uh, every time I come, I just, it just seems to be a very, very special, uh, filmic experience, uh, for me, um, especially the siege, uh, um, it possibly has to do because I'm, it has to do with the fact that I'm from here and perhaps my heart is more invested in, uh, stories from my homeland. Um, so it just seems to, uh, uh, impassion me more. And you're in Cyprus now, right? I'm in Cyprus right now, yes. I'm on the East Coast uh, in a um, resort called Proteras, which usually is swarming with tourists, but because of coronavirus, it is, I think, virtually empty, which um, is obviously not great for, for the economy, but quite good for, <laughs> for peace and quiet. <laughs> right. So Stavros, um, 
we, you know, we know you, we, you studied at NYU. You, I, I'm not sure when you finished, but you're now back in Cyprus and making a career as a, a, a Cypriot filmmaker. And uh, so, so are you planning to stay there? And First of all, hi, everybody. And thank you, George. And thank you, James and, and the Hellenic Film Society. Uh, as Stephanie said, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're really grateful that the film is being screened and we wish we were there, but this is, it's great to talk to everyone uh, like this. Um, and yeah, I, I, I studied film in New York. Um, then I went back to Cyprus thinking I was gonna, you know, uh, kind of, I got a job, I got a job directing commercials, which was, which was great because I was only 22 and thought, wow, you know, this is, I'm already kind of doing what I learned to do, you know, and I thought I would be able to write screenplays while directing commercials that didn't really work out that way. Um, because just the workload was just so intense that I had left in 2006 and moved to London, um, which is where I started writing screenplays and I moved to Cyprus in 2012 to make a film and leave. Um, but uh, in 2013, um, you know, there was the haircut, uh, you know, where Cyprus had to, uh, you know, build itself in by, you know, haircutting all the, all the, you know, accounts over a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand euros. Um, so we had a financial crisis. So that film, which cost a lot of money kind of was parked. Um, and I wrote a new film which was called the siege. And then my plan was to leave after the siege uh, but Cyprus is away with its weather and it's, you know, and your family's there and the food is great and, you know, um, travel before COVID is relatively easy, uh, especially to London. Um, so we're still there. I'm currently speaking to you from uh, the Peloponnese, uh, where I'm, I'm, I'm here for, for work. I've been here for two weeks. Um, but, you know, the skyline as you can see, is basically, you know, the same. Like, it hasn't been a cloud in the sky for, you know, for two weeks. Um, so it's, it's hard. It's hard kind of, you know, ecosystem to leave, I guess. So right. I'm still here. If you're, if you're there for work, maybe you, you uh, are scouting locations for your next film. Or not, but we can, we can, you can explain to yourself later. So I guess um, the... Uh, Jim Demetrio likes to say that uh, the siege is is a Greek film with American savvy. So, uh, why do you think he, he he says that? Is it do you think it has something to do with you having gone to NYU film school, or just your your sensibilities for the movies that you like, or were just the nature of of, of this particular movie being as um, dramatic as it is and controversial? Interesting. Um, I I've always you know, like the reason I went to NYU, the reason I wanted to go to NYU is because the filmmakers who kind of come out of NYU were my favorite filmmakers as a teenager, you know, like, like Martin Scorsese, you know, was, I guess one of the first filmmakers whose films I saw and realized that film was more than, you know, uh, you know, like a blockbuster, you know, um, it was one of those, I still remember the first time I saw Text Driver, I was like, I don't know, like nine or 10, I wasn't actually watching, it was being watched in the house. And then I kind of stumbled on it and I was like, what is this? You know, it was one of those moments where you just feel like your mind is expanding and it's going to explode, you know? Uh, so that, that movie. <laughs> exactly. And I didn't even watch like the, you know, like the, the blood parts at the end. It was just this whole, this whole atmosphere and this character who was clearly the main character, but wasn't like this Im immediately likable guy, you know, in my nine year old brain, it was like, just amazing uh, and then I'm revisiting that as a teenager uh, with an with an active interest in film um, you know I really felt that um, film like like the, the Martin Scorsese East Coast School of filmmaking which was you can entertain and tell an amazing story but you're also you know you've got a drive that isn't just you know about the bottom line and, and about how many tickets you're gonna sell is kind of the thing that really stigmatized me as a filmmaker. It's the thing I'd, I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be able to tell a story. Like I, I, I want my films to be audience facing, but I, but, I, but I also want to respect that audience, you know, and, and, and kind of um, try and give them what's, you know, what's from the heart rather than like, you know, what I think will work in a commercial kind of way, I guess. Um, and so, I've always, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'm a huge fan of genre. Genre is like a thing that gets really maligned, you know, especially in, in you know, in, in the artier circles. But I really find it really helps 
as a as a as an anchor, as a linchpin, as like as a, just a pin on a board, like you know, to, to know what your what you know what the ancestors of the kind of story you're telling are, you know, what came before. So I always I was always saying about the siege that it's Western, uh, even though you know it, it has all kinds of things in it, and it's you know some people call it a drama and a comedy and a, a thriller and a social realism or whatever. For me, it was that was the genre we were closest to. Um, for for reasons we can discuss, you know. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting you said that, and 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 I know with the little piece that you filmed and we have playing at the end of the this. The, you know, if anyone watches the movie at the end, there's a you have a, a five minute conversation t talking about the movie, and you mentioned it there. I've seen it in some of the other interviews that you've done, and and I will want to come back to that discussion. Um, but just uh, you know, before we get into the season specifically. Did you always, when did you know you wanted to be a filmmaker as a teenager? And I'm going to ask Daphne, when did you know you wanted to get into acting? Uh, up to the age of 14, I wanted to be a heavy metal, like a professional heavy metal musician. And then at the age of 14, I realized that probably wasn't going to happen. So I chose the next kind of hardest or easiest thing, which was to like, you know, be a, be a filmmaker. So I think ever since I was um, like 15, it was like a, a target because to go, to go from Cyprus to, to, you know, to film school in, in America, you really had to plan it ahead. You know, and there was SATs, SAT2s, all kinds of stuff that needed to happen. Uh, so it was, it was that, I think it was around about then, age of 15. Daphne? I think I was a, a later bloomer, uh, actually. I've always, I always knew it was um, to do with language and uh, to do with expressing myself. And I was always into uh, literature and films, obsessed with films. Uh, but to be honest, when I was a teenager, I, I did want to be an actor, but I, I thought that everybody wanted to be an actor. So I was just like, yes, of course you want to be an actor. Everybody wants to be an actor. But only in my early 20s did I realize, oh, actually, not everybody wants to do this. <laughs> so, um, uh, yes, it kind of came serendipitously, even though I was on a different path. Uh, um, you, st it, you studied acting in college? I studied law to begin with. Um, and synchronicity and things came along my way to make me realize uh, in my early 20s what I wanted to do. And that's when I went to drama school uh, in London. And uh, so it was a very, very exciting time. And it took, you know, it was, uh, I had to change course entirely. So Stavros, how did you um, get introduced to Daphne? Did you discover in a film or do you guys know each other? Um, uh, well, full, full, full disclosure, I had a massive crush on her younger sister uh, when we were in high school. Um, and, uh, you know, we were quasi dating in the teenage kind of way for, for a few weeks. And Daphne was like the, the more kind of aloof older sister who made fun of us uh, <laughs> every time she walked in and through the room. Um, but, you know, it's a it's a small place, and 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 her sister and I remained friends. And of course, you know, uh, not many not many Cypriots end up in London working in film. So it was like you know it was like an immediate you know uh, reconnection, I guess, uh, uh, in in two thousand and six or seven when we kind of first crossed paths again. It was like oh. You know, you're the one who was making fun of me, but you know, like you did know, you, did you always see Daphne in this role? The, from the moment I wrote the role, from the moment the role kind of existed, yes, absolutely, uh, absolutely, because from I mean, there's yes, uh, it wasn't a purposeful thing. It wasn't like I'm going to write a, a role for Daphne at all. It's just literally like the, you know, uh, the moment she was on the page, I was, I was, I thought, you know, no one better. This is it. So hopefully she'll say yes. So you know that was that was the strategy uh, to kind of bring it to uh, love. And, and indeed, in 2013, when I was in London, I think Stavros was in uh, Cyprus at the time. He sent me this script, and this is many years before we actually ended up filming it. And I remember having this, reading it, and instantly being, you know, tugged by this role and by this story. And uh, we spoke and, uh, and for many years afterwards, when, you know, things were falling into place, uh, we continued talking and uh, deepening our understanding of, 
you know, and um, becoming more and more sort of uh, better friends and, you know, which led to a, a really wonderful collaboration. Um, yeah, I was going to say, not, uh, maybe not many know that you played Stella in the, in the short film, The Palace, which was another film that was inspired by the Turkish invasion. Um, that, you know, Stavros, before you got on the call, me and Daphne were just talking a little bit about that because I actually know Anthony Maris and uh, loved that short film. It was incredible, hard to watch. And I, the director, Anthony Maris, made uh, uh, Hotel Mumbai and, um, and with Deb Patel and Army Hammer. And I think Army Hammer in an interview said that, you know, it was like the best 12, 15 minutes of cinema he's ever watched it really you know he had to stop watching it and really sort of collect himself and uh mm -hmm. but for a short film it had a lot of um it, it was i'm sure it was a difficult film to make because it literally was on the day of the invasion uh, so the so stavros and maybe you can set up the the story of the siege and and because it is not the day of the invasion it's 20 i think it's set in 2015 but you talk about what happened in 2013 and the breakdown of the peace talks and and just the what made that you know more difficult for for his family in that situation um yeah so you know the cyprus ever since 1974 some would say even since 1963 you know nicosia is is, is, is it has been a divided city and um it's that that part of of of, of town where the buffer zone kind of abuts pe you know people's houses is is frozen in time and for me um, it's it's not only like a geographical thing it's it's a mental thing if you, you know if you grew up in Nicosia and you're driving around um, you know that part of the city and there's a road I mean your your father's driving I mean you're your mother you're like six or seven and like you know like you know every two blocks is like a like a you know a stop sign and you can't go any further um that that you know that that kind of unnatural um barricade starts to you know it, it starts to become it's it, it's it shouldn't be something that you become accustomed to do you know what i mean um same thing with like you know you're you're a teenager and you're you know uh i guess you know having fun downtown and you know, like you, you know, you can't step into this into this field because like someone will shoot you. That's like not um, that's not a, a normal kind of way to to be. And I think that like, that that eventually becomes a barricade in your mind in the way in the way, in like in the way you actually think about progress and the way you actually think about you know um, your even your civic responsibility because it's it's sort of like Nicosia is like now like something we're not really responsible for because it's still you know, half occupied. I don't know if that makes sense. Like things like keeping it clean and keeping it maintained. Um, and and uh, what I really kind of wanted to do with this film is, is to say, you know, we're not gonna solve our bigger problems if we don't kind of start taking responsibility as a society for the, for, for the, little, the little ones, little ones being like this one family, you know, it's not a little problem at all, but you know, this one family is literally kind of right there in the middle and there and there and there because no one's no one's actually helping them and no one's taking responsibility for the fact that they're about to lose their house this you know the the, the mr p the guy with the gun kind of turns this whole situation around and uses the dead end against the people who don't take responsibility if that makes sense right um and uh I, I guess we said it on the day of, of the of the uh, negotiations, where the where the, the last kind of the last day where the, like it seemed like there could be some kind of progress in the negotiations on on you know on the Cyprus on the Cyprus problem, the Cyprus issue, because um, obviously we wanted people to to draw those those connections, you know. Um, what was interesting? I heard you talk about the siege as being a universal film, but clearly I mean, you said it in a particular place. So it is in that sense, it's very singular, so, uh, you know, uh, a, a Greek Cypriot film because you're at, you know, the UN buffer zone and um, the island is divided. I know now, I guess people can sort of go back, back and forth. Back and forth. In Rome, yeah. But the, um, it, you know, and I read that, that, it, that, that at the widest place, it, 
uh, on that uh, in the buffer zone, it could be as almost five, mi five miles long. And in other places, it's, I think the most narrow place is like 11 feet. So right. in watching the movie, it looks like it's, it's very narrow. He, like you've got the Greek army in front of him and he's got the Turkish army behind him. He's got the UN uh, police sort of monitoring the buffer zone, but he can only be flanked from the front and he's defending his house. And right. so in that sense, you know, it makes sense when the police come, when the, um, the anti-terrorist squad shows up and, um, you know, there's really, you know, he's able to sort of do what he does and I'm not going to give away the film to sort of, you know, deal because with the situation because the... it's very complicated, right? And Daphne is in the middle of that. The children are in the middle of that. There's a hostage trade-off at some point. And then, of course, he does something that's um, that is kind of unexpected uh, at the end. So, um, so obviously you had that to put to play with. And I think, obviously, I think that's why you, I mean, that's not, you didn't make a Western for making a Western sake, but it clearly given the situation you had good guys and bad guys. Yeah. And, 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 and you, you have a place literally in the middle of Europe, which is, I mean, I feel like it is my responsibility in a way as a filmmaker from Cyprus to show the story world that kind of made me a filmmaker and the story world that made me a filmmaker is the you know the last divided city in in you know in Europe um, but not to just show it and be like look 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 but to, it generates stories like it generates cinematic stories you know um, and and you know uh, that was that was very much a deliberate kind of intention and it is a place where the law of the Republic of Cyprus ends like it you know you're driving on the street and then you on, after this after this point you can go 100 miles an hour uh, you know and and the police can't catch you that's that's the wild west you know that's you know uh, so in a way so it really lent itself to that genre so Daphne your your character uh ends up accidentally shooting someone and that's really what sparks all of uh what follows in the film so um, yeah. What was that like for you just in that role as a mother, two kids, not really knowing what's going on because your husband's keeping a lot of that information from you. And when that happens, you know, how do you, how does, how do you feel like your character change changes? Because you always throughout seem to be a pretty respectful wife and mother and, and, um, and you, and you're trying to uh, help, your husband who's suffering because he's he's you know uh, you know his he's got he has a backstory and there's some uh you know uh, uh he's unemployed but he's also has a ptsd and so but you're you seem to be there for him and the family even after something pretty traumatic happens to you well what i found particularly intriguing about this part was precisely the fact that um because of the circumstances she has to remain an enigma because we, she can't express herself. So it's all very, very internal. So there's a massive story going on and um, her life changes irrevocably during this fateful day. In fact, I remember on the script, I'd written this, uh, this quote from, I think from Mrs. Dalloway, when I think it's, uh, where it said, um, it was on this day of all days that her fate became known to her. And it was very much this character um, and uh, a mother and trying to keep her family and her life together when everything is falling apart. And it was a very, very uh, fine, fine balance uh, to strike because she needed to be strong and yet um, it was very difficult to, but she needed to stay strong for her family and for her kids and for her husband who was clearly you know, not who he once was. Um, and obviously I loved how Stavros in this script ingeniously uh, weaves the, the political and the, you know, the, 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 the outer sort of world of recent Cyprus history, like the, the explosion of the naval base and the, um, uh, the, uh, the raid on the bank deposits and the economic crisis. And, it all becomes, and of course, the house that is built on the buffer zone, which relates back to the invasion of 1974. Um, and it all relates to one single family. 
so the story, the outside story becomes extremely personal. And at the end of the day, it is a story of this woman and this family trying to survive uh, within a set of extraordinary circumstances. So it is a very universal story. It is a, a story of a woman who's losing everything she holds dear, her children, her husband, her home, which she uh, very strenuously tries to renovate, you know, whilst, you know, even though it's built on the buffer zone, you know, she renovates it lovingly in the hope that one day that the island will be, you know, uh, made, you know, reunified and uh, she can uh, live in this ancestral home, if you like, uh, with her family. And yet it's all taken away from her um, on that day. And it's how she reacts. And obviously it's, it's an incredibly difficult and incredibly strong part. And I feel incredibly fortunate that I, I was given this, this chance uh, to, to tackle such a, such a role. It's a gift for an actor. Um, so had you worked with the, um, I, 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 just, I know it was for some Constantino, the, 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 the male lead. Have you, did you work with him in, before or is this, is he no. Cypriot? No, he's Greek. He's Greek he's originally. Uh, a very well known and highly respected uh, theater and uh, screen actor and director. Um, and we were very, very lucky to, uh, to work with him. Uh, we had an extremely uh, good collaboration. Uh, and um, I think... Yeah, you guys uh, together, I mean, had really good screen presence, so I, that, that worked for sure. And his, yeah. so in the film, his father, it's his father who's living with them. So I assume it's his, his family home. Is, that's the impression I got. Um, so this is right. something maybe explains why he's going to the extreme he's going to protect what he has because he it was fun maybe it was his father's home he grew up there and now you're living there and obviously it, it looks like you've renovated it and, and trying to keep what you have and then of course if it's, it's being taken away uh or the threat that it's being taken away and that which forces him to you know to, to you know act in a very dramatic fashion um so, so I'm going to ask you uh, sort of, we had, uh, last, uh, we'll, we're at 1.30 now, but I'm going to go what, just five minutes and we can maybe open up to just a question here or two. But are you, how old are you, act, out of curiosity? I mean, were you born, um, were you, do you remember 1996 and what happened in Virginia as a, as a kid? Yes. So, yes, I was a year away from um, going into the army. So we were... Um, you know, we were asked, we were, of the, of, we were in, uh, old enough to be told to, to hang, like not travel that summer and like, you know, be ready in case we were called. So it was, it was, um, we, you know, we lived, we lived a pretty intense. So you were in the army at, at that time. I was, it was a year, I was a year away from going into yeah. the army. So we, so we were of an age that we were actually told, all, all of us at that age were told because of what happened to be on standby. Right, we, they may have needed us to go in, you know, earlier. So, so even was, though was a, W4 was seemed summer. like a, you know half a century ago, you know, '96 is also still you know a good 25 years um, ago. But it seems so recent in what happened there, and it's real. Uh, these things, you know, conflicts at the border lead to these kinds of you know unfortunate situations, and and uh, and what happened there was very tragic, to not just uh, you know, to both uh, uh, Solomon, Solomon and his, Solomon, and his cousin. Yeah. So, um, and maybe pe people don't know that's that what happened. They can read about that. And obviously, when you know the history of Cyprus, and you watch your film, which is contemporary movie, you realize this is people are living in this situation today. Um, and uh, and you know, I always say the, the world doesn't know Cyprus. I mean, you can maybe not everyone can even find it on a map, but it's it you know, makes it difficult to, um, I mean, I think it makes it important for you and other separate filmmakers to tell stories about your country and uh, the situation there. And the more those stories get out, the more the world will know what's, what's really happening there. And I'll sort of end with asking, you know, a question to you, Stavros, who, you know, we're interested in, in the film industry is in Cyprus and what challenges you as a separate filmmaker and your, your contemporaries and peers you know, uh, we know that, that there, um, there are a lot of young talent coming out of Cyprus and there, there's going to be more, you know, movies like 
the siege that are going to come onto the scene and will play in international festivals and get distribution outside of, you know, Greece and Cyprus. And so we look forward to that. But how do you feel about the future of your future and the future of your um, colleagues? I have to say that you're, I think you're right that in the last few years, it seems like there's a new generation coming up um, that is slowly finding its voice. Um, and, and um, you know, which, and I think we're all characterized by this need to kind of be more audience facing and, 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 and are also driven by the idea that we want to kind of tell the story of our country, but do it in a way that isn't, you know, um, that is, that is, and you know, that like actually also can combine with a good story. Uh, you know, you've, you've got, you know, Finding Hendrix is like, you know, like a, a, a right. great example. Um, but, and, and I feel like uh, because of Cyprus opening up now to a lot of international productions, um, who's going to get better? There's going to be a lot more pools to tell those stories. Um, and um, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic that um, at least in terms of output and quality, that that Cypriot cinema is, you know, about to have like a a, a boom. You know, um, I, I, I'm I'm hoping that you know COVID and the challenges to actual cinematic distribution uh, right now don't kind of um, curtail that that you know they're 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 coming just as a lot of these filmmakers are getting their act together and they're about to make their second or third film. So it's a tricky time. Um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, an, it's a really, it's a, it's a tense time because there is that potential that you're talking about. Um, and and uh, I'm, I'm your really ne- hoping- Your next it. film is gonna be in Cyprus, it sounds like. Uh, even though I know, um, I, I mean, it's about a Cypriot astronaut. So I assume it's set in Cyprus, but if you're in it's Greece a, working, maybe uh, that's it, you had an, even another project. But uh, the, I'm gonna ask as, you as, what's as, next for the two, what's next for each of you individually? After you want to go? Um, again, it's it's been a crazy year. Um, a lot of things were about to happen, which got pushed. So the question now is when these things that were about to happen, when they will happen. Uh, there were a few projects, very interesting projects, uh, that were you know slated for uh, spring or autumn of 2020. Um, I do have a, a short film in, to, to shoot in, in Greece, uh, which is a lovely um, Greek film again. Uh, and I'm very hopeful that this, this surreal thing that we're living will um, not, as, as Stavros said, not curtail all the very creative and, and um, hopeful um, uh, filmmaking that is, is uh, coming along um, in Cyprus and Greece which I'm very, very interested in as, as, as an actress at this point. And Stavros? Uh, well, uh, you know, the, the, the last... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the film I moved to Cyprus to make in 2012 was The First Cypriot Astronaut, and it was struck, you know, was struck down by the, that crisis. Um, and 2020 was, you know, the year we were slated to go into production for the first Cypriot astronaut again. Uh, and now it's been delayed because of uh, COVID. So one thing I've learned in the last few years is you've got to have a slate. You know, you can't, you can't just be like, this is the film. You've got to be working on several things at the same time. Right. So I've, I've got several screenwriting projects, you know, that I'm, that I'm working on. Um, but but you're right, like hopefully the next, the next territorial project is the first Cypriot astronaut, which does take place in Cyprus um, around the Anon plan referendum of 2004 when, you know, uh, one man is trying to kind of launch into space, but I won't say anything <laughs> more than that. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we, you know, we're hoping, we're hoping that we can uh, try and get it all back in, into place for, for 2021. Well, I want to congratulate you both. It's a, a brilliant script. I can guarantee that it is a brilliant script. Well, I, I, mean, I can guarantee that Daphne is going to be in it. So, <laughs> so, so you know. So, so. Look, I, I, I love, we love The Siege. I love The Siege. And I'm going to watch Shirley Adams. I know it's available on iTunes. And, um, it, you know, that, that just seems like a very intense film. And I, you know, I think you made it in 20, 2009, 2010. 2009. So it's, yeah. you know, it's... Um, you know, I guess you had, you were one of the co-writers and I, I, you know, that I'm sure there's, um, there's a, 
there's a lot to talk about in terms of how you even got involved with that project and and uh, and how you came up with that story. But it's I'm really looking forward to seeing that film. But again, thank you both. Uh, I know we just thank ran you. five minutes long, but it was really important to, to hear from you both. And thank you, Daphne, for, for for being involved in these conversations. It was great to hear from one of the actors. Absolute pleasure. Thank you again for for including us in this wonderful yep. festival. Always you, hear from the writer, directors, people behind the camera. I want to see the talent. We would have been in New York with you. Um, yeah, definitely. So, really. Right, thanks we'll to everybody. On. Thanks to all the attendees that I'm seeing here on, on the right as well. Thanks for, for tuning in, everybody. All thanks right. Thank you. And um, we'll, be, we'll look forward to um, having you in New York at some point uh, on your next projects. Thank you.